Hi everyone, this is Hash with the Random Workshop. I wanted to show you something uh, that I've been working on. It's actually different from the Neato LiDAR, which seems to be the only thing that's been on my blog. Uh, this is called a Series Elastic Actuator. Uh, if you haven't heard of that before, it's actually very interesting. I'll have a, a few topics and uh, links posted at the bottom of this uh, blog post. Uh, but any new robotic arms, actuators, anything like that, kind of going into the future that is supposed to be things that work alongside people, will be using devices like this. Uh, and I'm going to explain uh, how I think I've basically made about the lowest cost one I could find, uh, and you know, kind of the importance of, of this type of actuator. So what this is is just basically a servo right now that's rotating back and forth. Uh, nothing too complex about that. On the oscilloscope you see the waveform driving the servo on the top. Uh, so it's just going you know, back and forth. And then on the bottom there's another waveform. Uh, it's you know, just measuring a voltage coming off of a sensor that's mounted on the top of the servo. Uh, so what it's going to do is, uh, right now it's going back and forth and it'll sense if I basically, if something gets in the way of it, so that it has a, a force feedback uh, in a way. So this is kind of the first part of a, a series elastic actuator. Basically uh, what it does is uh, there's a spring mechanism mounted on top of the servo so as I grab a hold of it or it gets in the way of something or hits something uh, it's not hard rigid mounted to the servo that little white arm that you see sticking out. There's actually some play so let me show you a little bit. If I hold on to this just to keep it stable and I let this uh, hit my finger, you see it pauses for a moment and then it goes again. It's just a little program I have written that's monitoring this sensor. So I'll hit it, stop, and let it go. Now I have another bit of code that I wrote that's actually more interesting. So if you think about a robot arm uh, and you want to position it in a different location, there's a few ways you could do that. Uh, you could do it through programming. Uh, you know, you could uh, do it similar to how you'd move a CNC machine by typing out a bunch of code to get it to move where you want, or you could just grab it and turn it where you want it to go. So what you'll see is on here this waveform that's driving the servo, as this waveform goes up or down right here uh, from the sensor that's being moved, so you see I'm, I'm kind of causing it to move a little bit there, as I push a little harder it senses that and it feeds to the servo to move to the next location. So there's actually some other videos I'll link to and some work that's been done uh, where people just grab a hold of the end of a robot arm and drag it wherever they want it to be and it positions itself accordingly instead of programming it. So this is doing the same thing. I grab the end here and I just turn it wherever I want it to be pointing and it control, you know, the, the microcontroller that's attached to this reads this signal uh, and then sends the data to the servo. Now the top here is spring loaded, so what you notice is as I get over to the the very end of where this can go, you see it's not rigid mounted to the servo, it's actually spring loaded and you'll see this little reading here moving as I'm doing this. Uh, and that's the series elastic portion of this, that's what that means. It means that in series with the drive of this servo, there's actually a spring loaded mechanism so that I can tweak this or as this thing's moving it could hit something and it's not going to just crash this whole drive mechanism you know break gears uh, break someone's arm you know if, it, if this whole say if this was a robotic arm and it, it actually hit a person's arm uh, you know if you think a big automotive type robotic arm would just snap you in half if it hit you so when we talk about you know going in the future and having robotic arms working alongside people uh, being able to help in different avenues whether it's in home healthcare or manufacturing or anything like that, you need a different method. Uh, so why I thought this was interesting is most of the actuators that have been uh, that have been built that are like this uh, are very expensive. What I have on here right now that I'm using is just a, a cheapy hobby servo uh, out of a, you know that just came with a transmitter that I bought. Uh, a little sensor on top to read the position that's actually uh, basically reads the position of a magnet in there. I think you could even do it with a potentiometer uh, and the whole thing you can make for probably ten bucks. 
so you know compared to these ones that I keep seeing that are five hundred and a thousand dollars and you know very precise which I'm sure at some level the precision matters uh, but at a very basic level just to be able to make something and experiment in your home this is a very basic uh, device that you could build a, a little robotic arm for not much money using very cheap parts. So let me show you a little more of the components uh, a little deeper.